Welcome to an evening edition of the Dog Man. That's right. Do this every weekend. Well, I like it. Like I've been doing it that long. Well, I have done it on the weekends. We're doing it now. What's the point? I don't know. I thought I'd come and tell a story that I've never told before on YouTube anyway. And I, I took a nap. And I came, and that day came back in my dream. A few of the details were different, but same day, same event. Uh, so let's get into it. Now in the year, uh, I believe it was probably around September, October, sometime in there of the year 2000. I started taking flight, flight lessons. That's right. My dream was to get out of the trade I was in, which was a printing trade. Paid pretty good. But I always had a dream of flying. Done a lot of flying in my life, and that was what I wanted to do. Um, I was still in the military. I was in the Army Reserves at the time. I'd just gotten married. And we were living in Iowa, Charles City, Iowa at the time. That was where she was from that area, actually, and well, that's where we lived. And they had a flight school. I signed up, gave them a boatload of money. <laughs> they have an account. You give them, say, ten grand. I put $10,000 in there, and the lessons come out of that. Each time you take a lesson, yeah, it gets a little smaller. Flight lessons are very expensive. And actually, I got a picture. I found all kinds of stuff digging out these pictures. My social security card. It's been messing for years. I found it. Now, so anyway, there's me. I didn't have it on a computer. That's me, the tall dude. That was my flight instructor. And then that's me. And that, wait a minute. Now you've just seen that one. That's me. And that is the airplane I was in on this particular day. That is a Piper Cherokee. Yep. That's a fun little plane to fly. I believe it was a 60, 1963 model. So I started taking my lessons. I worked a job at the newspaper. And we would go in at 4 in the morning. We'd be out of there Sometimes, many times before noon. So it was a great, it's great hours if you wanted to do something like take flight lessons or whatever you wanted to do. Work. I also worked a second job as a bartender right across the street. So I had plenty of time. And actually, the guy that owned the bar, he 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 was a pilot as well. So I went through oh man, I don't know how many weeks of lessons. I think, I think it was a total of 59 hours I had in the cockpit. Very small, hot, miserable cockpits those little planes have. And on July 5th, 2001, got it right here, man. Did my first solo flight. Okay, July 5th, 2001. Hang that back up before I just... Because I get lazy, I'll just toss it aside. First solo flight. And the way that went down, we went up. Usually, you know, you would have longer flights, uh, different lessons, crosswind landings, grass landings. This particular day, I knew something was up. Because he said, well, let's just go do, let's, let's just go up and do three, three takeoff and landings. Okay. We went up once, came down, I'm taxiing around to go back to do it again. He says, oh, stop stop the plane. I'm like, oh, no. He says, uh, I'm going to get out. He said, I want three takeoffs and landings. And I really wasn't nervous. You know, I, I knew I was ready. Um, but he didn't tell me, he, you know. He wasn't much of a talker. He wouldn't tell you how good you were doing or any of that. So, but I knew I could do it. So he got out. And uh, it's a very small airport. There's not even a tower. Uh, you, you, but you still radio, you know, if there's any incoming 
planes coming in you you got a radio so i go up i take off i come around first time perfect landing go up again it's a little windy that day uh, i go around come the final come to my I, I, I get on my approach and i get pretty close but I, i'm i kind of overshot where i should have been and I did a fly around. I took back off. Uh, no problem. Came back down. Did the other tube beautifully. And so my first solo was under my belt. Now to get your pilot, private pilot's license, you got to complete a series of things. You got to do, I believe it was three cross-country trips. Uh, you know, when you're ready, you, you schedule a time with the FAA uh, instructor, and then you take your test. And on this particular day, I'd already had two cross-country. And then what a cross-country is, it doesn't mean you're going across the country. It basically means you're going to take off from your home airport. You're going to land at three airports, different airports, take off, go land at another airport. Take off, go land in another airport, come home. That goes in the logbook as a cross-country flight. And I'd already had two, I, I had in, and they had to be different ones, at least at this school. I had to go different places. You couldn't just do that three times at the same airports. So on this third flight, it's all I had left to do, I believe. I, and it's been 20, what, four years, 20, 25 years, 24 years. Uh, yeah, it's fuzzy. So this particular day, yeah, the weather was perfect. It was a morning. I'm thinking about eight, eight in the morning, somewhere in there. Eight, yeah, about eight in the morning. And I took off work that day because of the weather. The way it was would be perfect. And or we could have just not worked that day. I don't know. It's been a while. So anyway, I take off. Got you. Got to make you got to make a flight plan and file the flight plan and all this and that. Sometimes you don't have to do that, depending on what you're doing. But I was going to a busy airport that day. Uh, Waterloo, Iowa, I believe that's where. And yeah, so I was going there first, and then I believe I was going to Forest City, Iowa, and I can't remember the third one. It's in my logbook, which I can't find. So anyway, I take off. I'm on my way to Waterloo. And I had no sooner gotten up. I think I'd gotten up to probably, I didn't, I didn't get too high. Probably about 6,000 feet. six or 7,000 feet. And I'm flying because it wasn't that far. You didn't want to get too high. And all of a sudden, <laughs> they come on the radio calling my, 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 my tail number you know uh what was it n31 i i remembered that for years m1823 tango i'm like uh yeah basically and you know i didn't say it that way i came back with it and he says you need to land immediately immediately and i was almost to waterloo so that's i you know i told him student pilot you know, I, what did I do? They just would not tell me. You need to land immediately. Immediately. And so he told, I told him where I was headed. And he says, okay. And, and, you know, then I called back to the tower when I got closer. And I'm behind a jet. <laughs> Which I had landed behind jets there before because... That is a FedEx. That was a, well, a lot of FedEx planes. I think it was either a hub or, you know, they landed there. And you got to be careful landing in jet wash. And you got to keep your distance. And I'm behind a jet and I'm in his wash and it ain't fun because I'm not that experienced, you know. So I'm, I, I, I land. I finally land, but I notice there are a lot of planes normally that normally there wasn't there and i'd landed there several times but never never without the flight instructor this was the first time i went there on my own 
even though I had two other cross country solo, I'd never landed there by myself. And that's what would I, well, that was the objective of the day is to land there in a, in a controlled tower, you know, with a control tower. The other airports didn't have them. So I land and, and he's telling me where to taxi and where to go put the plane. And then I'm explaining to him I'm on a cross country and he, he got mad and, you know, they don't really yell at you, but you could tell they mean, he says, park the plane. So at this point, I'm thinking I did something really bad and I can't figure out what it is. What did I do, man? I thought I did everything perfectly. So I parked the plane and I'm sitting there and I see other people, a lot of other people pulling in there with small planes like I'm in, Cessnas, Pipers, whatever. And everybody's confused. You know, there's kind of like pilots lingering around. They're looking, you know, they don't know what's going on. Well, there's a pilot lounge uh, not too far from where I'm at. So I go over in there and it's full of people. I've never been in no pilot lounge. I've never been in there. I never got out of the plane in that in that city. So I didn't have a clue what was going on. And then there was a TV in there. And everybody was really quiet, sitting around, watching the TV. And 9-11 had just happened. So now I know why I'm on the ground. I, I really, at that point, I didn't know. But we're all watching that. I don't think anybody got to watch that like I did because I'm in a room full of pilots. And right off the bat, even though I wasn't that experienced, right off the bat, I knew that was no accident. You know, and, and I came in right at the point where the first one had hit. And the second one hadn't hit yet. And then not long after, I mean, we're in there. We can't go anywhere. We're banned from flying. Uh... The second one land hit the... Then we all knew what was going on. And then everybody knows how that day transpired. And, man, you talk about a scary day. So that plane ended up sitting there for, I believe, close to three weeks before we could retrieve it. And when we did, we, we took another plane. I got back in that one. And I'm kind of nervous because, you know, that plane ain't been run in three weeks. <laughs> he says, oh, it'll be fine. Just do your run-ups. You know, everything will be fine. So, you know, there was enough fuel. But, man, what an, and that, that was the, the, the last entry in my flight log for quite a while. Uh, there wasn't any flying too much after that. And then I got back, it was probably October, close to November, before I was flying again. Got the test done, got the pilot's license. But here was the problem. My flight instructor, I had a different flight, and he had left to go to work for U.S. Air. Uh, over that incident, uh, a lot of pilots lost their jobs. It changed the whole thing, so my whole dream went... <laughs> yeah, and I moved on, moved out of the area... Got, you know, never never became a pilot for a living. But that's something I will never forget. I guarantee you. It was, I thought I did something bad. And I think I'd have been a good, you know, I'd have, I'd have enjoyed that and been a good pilot. And uh, that was certainly put, put some stress on me. That was a stress test for sure. But I will never forget that day as long as I live. I don't think anybody will. You know, if you were around then, you're not going to forget what happened that day. That's what happened to me. Yep. Thanks for watching. Happy trails.